Hello and welcome to another segment of the LPE Author Chat Series. I am Kimberly K. Labou, CEO and founder of Labou Publishing Enterprise. This month is our special anthology edition featuring authors from the soon to be released book, True Wealth Starts in the Mind by visionary author Lisa M. Jones. And our special guest on tonight is Ms. Renee Turner. So welcome to the broadcast, Renee. Thank you, Kimberly. I'm excited to be on. Awesome. Awesome. I'm excited to have you. So you wrote the chapter um, titled Sowing and Reaping. So why don't you tell us why you chose that as your title for this book? Really, because I think um, when you think about principles in every area of life that really you can't get a harvest where you haven't sown seeds. And so, you know, when we think about true wealth begins in the mind, I just realized how much my life changed when I became really conscious and deliberate about what seeds I was going to sow. Um, and then to make sure that I identified, you know, the things that I didn't want to sow anymore in order that I could make sure the harvest that I reaped was really the harvest that I desired. Awesome. Yeah, that's important. So in your opening chapter of True Wealth uh, Starts in the Mind, you talked about um, the fact that you had achieved academic success in high school and also in college, but you said that there was a void in your belief system when it came to achieving wealth. Um, you also talked about your upbringing um, and, and the part that that plays. So how much of an impact did your upbringing play in that void in your belief system about wealth? Well, I will start with the fact that my upbringing really had taught me that the principle of sowing and reaping actually worked, you know, um, that in the areas where I had success, academic success, success as a leader in different organizations, even when I got my job after I graduated from Georgia Tech, I was successful. And so my, my parents had really um, planted that seed in me um, that Every choice has consequences, right, good or bad. So I believed in that principle, um, but because I hadn't had specific teaching in the area of financial independence and wealth, I just never had applied that principle of sowing and reaping to that area of my life, even though it had proven that it was actually a true principle in all those other areas. So um, because my family didn't have wealth, I just never extended the belief I had about sowing and reaping into the area of building wealth. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Um, so you said you must be intentional and diligent to plant seeds and grow flowers, but weeds just grow with no effort or conscious thought. Since I didn't have many seeds or positive thoughts sown in my mind in relationship in relationship to wealth, I had a lot of weeds, negative thoughts about money. You wrote that you had the thought that money is scarce. Um, don't ask for or desire things that your family can't afford. Wanting some, uh, wanting more means you are greedy. And God only cares about my spiritual, mental, and physical prosperity, not my financial prosperity. So those were a couple things that you wrote um, as, as about your thought process. But you said the sec this section of the garden of my mind that dealt with financial prosperity was like an abandoned lot full of ugly weeds and sand spurs. And you said people in Florida know about stepping on sand spurs and how painful that is. You said you had not applied the lessons of sowing and reaping in that area of your life. So I know that there are a lot of people um, who have weeds growing in this area. So how did you manage to overcome that mindset, those really? thoughts? That's a great question. And it starts with really identifying that I had weeds in my mind in relationship to money. You know, um, when I talk about seeds, that's the positive thoughts. When I talk about weeds, those are the negative thoughts. And as I uh, joined the financial industry, which is the industry I'm in as an entrepreneur, I began to meet people that had positive thoughts about money that they could be a good person, that they could serve God and they could still be very successful financially and make a lot of money and build wealth. And I began to realize that I had a totally different belief system. So I had all these weeds because I hadn't spent any time cultivating the area of financial prosperity in my mind 
thinking good thoughts about that. And uh, I, it really came to my mind, though, when I saw people that thought very differently than me when it came to money. Mm. So your environment, a change in your environment really had a lot to do with the change of your mindset. Absolutely. The change in the environment had everything to do with that change in my mindset. So environment is so important and who you allow to influence you is so important. You know, the um, just the idea of if you change the, the people you're around, right, then you will begin to change to be more like the people you're around for the good or for the bad, right? Well, fortunately, I began to be around people that had a really positive, healthy mindset about money and wealth, and it began to change my mindset as well. Wow, that's powerful. powerful. Um, and did you know we learned that from in childhood? You say birds of a feather flock together. We hear all of those little sayings, and so it still carries over and, and makes a lot of sense in this arena as well. Um, so, was there a specific moment or a specific incident that um, shifted your mindset? I know you set up, you talked about being in that environment, but was there a thing for you? Uh, that was a mindset shift when it comes to financial, your financial health? Wow, you know, that's a great question. I really hadn't thought about it, but I would say probably it was when I, I had my first daughter, you know, and my idea that I wanted to give her a phenomenal life, not just the spiritual values and the family values and the love, but I wanted to add on something that um, I hadn't had, and that was to give her opportunities in life that I could only give if I had more money. And then I had a second daughter six years later, but I would say probably having my first daughter began to make me think that I needed to broaden my horizons. If I wanted to give her this incredible life and these incredible opportunities, I was gonna need money to be able to do that. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, you said, because um, we talked about your academic principles in the beginning, you said, I began to realize that I had not applied the same principles I use for academic success in being a successful leader of organizations and a successful employee to the area of financial success. I began to think about the fact that studying and working hard has served me well in all, other, in, in all my other endeavors. So why wouldn't it also serve me well in the area of building? wealth. Um, so in essence, you were saying you already had the tools and the formula, but you just needed to, the, to apply them to this particular area of your life. So do you believe that a lot of people um, don't do better because they just don't know better? Or do you feel like we have, a lot of people have the tools and just don't know how to utilize them? I absolutely believe that people have the tools because when you look at people, they do well as an employee, right? They get, you know, they, they're trusted as being the one that the boss can always count on. They, a lot of people do well academically or they do well in terms of uh, sowing the things they need to sow in order to have a great family life. And so people have success in all these other areas of life and they're good people. And I think that most people are like me, those very same principles, those very same habits, those very same skills that same thinking, they just never extend it to the area of finance and the fact that they can build financial independence, they can build wealth. So they have the skills, they have the knowledge, they just don't apply it in that particular area of their life. Wow, that's so interesting. So interesting. Let's see, you said, I had to change my beliefs in order to change my thoughts. I had to change my thoughts in order to change my words. I had to change my words in order to change my behavior. And I just really like that. So I wanted to read it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you also, um, let's see, you talked about um, the, the scripture and let's see, where, where is it? I lost it. But it's the one that talks about, Lord, help my unbelief. Like I believe yes. or help my unbelief. And I know that I have personally, uh, um, so Lord, Lord, help my prayers. unbelief. And I personally know about that because it's like we, we know what God is capable of, but yet we still have that small area of unbelief. And I think that impacts a lot of people um, when it comes to wealth, because it's like, I know I really want this, but you know, am I really worthy of this? Or can I really right. have this? So that Lord help my unbelief. So I like um, that you included that in the book. 
So is that one that you used often? Yes, and that's actually in the book of John. And that is so, it's, it, it's so we meaningful talking, to me because- We were because... talking about um, the scripture that says, everything is possible for him who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Yes. And so we were talking about that and you were about to share. Yes, so I, said, I love that. I love that passage because, again, uh, we have all for people that believe as I believe we we have this level of faith in so many areas where God can deliver and God can provide. But then we have those little areas where we lack belief. And the incredible thing is the very belief that we need. We have to go to God to get that belief. Right. So God, in these areas where I, I lack belief, in these areas where I'm struggling, in these areas where I'm weak, in these areas where I lack faith. I can go to God and say, God, you help me believe in those areas where I have unbelief. I think that's incredible. So I don't have to do it by myself. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. I agree. Um, so let's see, you wrote about four things as it pertains to wealth in the book. You wrote about belief, thoughts, words, and behavior. So I just want us to talk about um, two of those, okay. which is... Um, thoughts and words. So let's talk about thoughts and words and the people can, they can read by the book if they want to read the other ones, right? Okay. <laughs> so other thoughts, she says, as I began to study more about the power of the mind, I realized that I had to learn to unleash the power of my thoughts in a positive way instead of a negative way. Talk to us about that. Yeah, absolutely. I believe so much in the power of the mind. And as I begin to study that, what I realize is that whatever we think about is what's going to come about, right? And so if I go through life thinking about the things I don't want in my life, thinking about the negative things that but are going I was talking on in about my life, the power of thought, right? And so that what we think about is what's going to come about. And so most people go through their daily life thinking about the things they don't want, thinking about the negative things going on in their life, thinking about what they're not happy about. And so what they're manifesting is more negativity. They're attracting more of what they're thinking about. And so we have to be intentional and deliberate about thinking about what we want and not thinking about what we don't want. Thoughts are things. So we have to think about what we think about because our thoughts are so powerful. Yes, yes, they are. Um, okay, so we're going to move right along because I don't want you to freeze anymore. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, so let's see. You also wrote um, that you have these replacement phrases. You said, I don't ever re replace, I don't ever have enough money with, money is abundant in my life. You replaced, I can't ever get ahead with, great things always happen to me. I like that. And you replaced, nothing is going my way with, I attract people and money. I love those phrases. So now let's talk about words. Um, you okay. wrote, I learned that it wasn't it, that it wasn't enough to think about the life I want. I have to speak about it. I had to have the courage to talk about the life I want. I have to talk about it not only to myself, but I also have to have the courage to talk about it even among people who may not agree with me. Yes. Talk, tell me why. All right. And so, guys, the, the power of life and death is in the tongue, right? You have to have the courage to speak about what you want. Um, you cannot hold it inside. It's got to be like fire in your bones. You, it has to come out. And so you have to talk about it to yourself. You have to talk about it to other people. You have to talk. You got to proclaim it, right? And so, again, the power of words and speaking what you want, thinking about it and speaking about it is very, those are very important steps along the path of manifesting that life that you want. Yeah. yeah. Super powerful. Um, so we talked about also reaping the harvest. The good stuff, guys. Reaping the harvest once you do all the hard work, right? He said, as you can see, sowing the right seeds and removing the weeds requires you to be consistent, disciplined, focused, and diligent. You can not, you can't opt out of the work. So talk about the work and the fact that you can't opt out of the work because some right. people, um, you know, they see your success and your lifestyle and all of that stuff and they say, I want that. But they're trying to go from A to Z without touching all those other letters in the middle. 
Yep. And really, that's where I talk about behavior. Guys, you, you have to do the work of, uh, of cultivating the mind, what you read, what you listen to, who you speak with, who you allow to influence you. All of that is part of the process. And then, of course, you have to do the actual work of whatever uh, avenue you're going to pursue to uh, build that financial success You make sure you have a great money habits so that you can do the right things with your money to get that money success and so it is WRK you got to grind it out in whatever area you want to succeed in just like you did academically just like you're doing that job you go to work on that job 40 hours if they ask you to do 50 or 60 you do it so you've got to be willing to do that same work in your thinking in your words so that you can achieve the financial success that you want <laughs> yeah Love it. And so let's see. Lastly, uh, you closed out your chapter with something really powerful. And I want to read it. Um, okay. You said the great news is the great news is when you invest the hard work to cultivate the garden of your mind, the harvest of wealth that you reap can impact you, your family, and your community. The creation of wealth has the capacity to change the next generation. The full harvest doesn't appear overnight, which we just talked about, or even in one growing season. The joy comes from day after day, fighting the battle for controlling your mind, planting positive thoughts and yanking out negative thoughts. You gain satisfaction from setting a goal and achieving it, and then setting another goal and achieving it over and over again. As your reality comes more and more into alignment with your dreams, it encourages you to keep fighting the good fight. Yes. That was delicious. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I absolutely love your, your chapter, and I love the analogy, that, that uh, different analogies that you used in here. And so I know that um, our readers are just going to be blessed by your chapter, um, Sowing and Reaping, and uh, just as the, the entire book is amazing and i'm just so grateful that you shared your chapter in there and, um, to edify us and to uplift us and hopefully to get us on a better path to financial health and wealth and so i just thank you so much but is there any final thoughts that you want to share with our audience yeah, I just want to speak life into people and let them know that god has a purpose for you a purpose for for your life and it's not for failures for success you're going to go through some ups and downs and obstacles and challenges but all that's meant is just to turn you into the person that god created you to be so whatever your dream is believe that there can be financial uh reward and financial abundance attached to it guys so so dream big work hard trust god and man, the world is, everything in the world is available to you so thank you so much Kimberly. it's a pleasure to be a part of this great book Amen. I'm so excited about it. So thank you again for joining us and thank you to our viewers for joining us for another segment of the LPE Author Chat Series with our special uh, segment of the anthology True Wall Starts in the Mind by visionary author Lisa M. Jones. Yes. So like I said, stay tuned. We have more, uh, more authors uh, that are going to be coming to share on tomorrow so that's amazing and exciting and so i hope you guys will join us and thank you again for hanging out with us and again if you are someone who's thinking about writing your own book head on over to www.laboopublishing.com and connect with us there take care and be blessed everyone good night mm -hmm.